Okay, so what I wanted to do was give you a, just a quick um, tutorial on how to get your initial uh, repository set up that you can use for all of your Eclipse work for the year. So what I'm going to do is walk through this as if I don't have anything set up so that way you can see how this would look. So first you'll go to File, New Repository, and then you're going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this uh, Eclipse uh, 2021, 2022, and I'm going to say that this will be um, the folder for all class code. All right. Now, in terms of um, where I want this to be stored, uh, it's going to ask me for a local path. So some students will have all of their repositories inside of a GitHub folder. This is up to you. Wherever you choose to store your repositories is irrelevant. Um, all that really matters is that the path name isn't really, really long. So now we're going to go ahead and say create repository. And what this is going to do is it's going to create an empty folder on your system that is synced with GitHub. And if I were to go to my file explorer and I were go to go into Astena, we would see right now that I have this Eclipse 21, uh, 22 folder I just made. And if I open it up, you'll see there's nothing in there except for these hidden files. And these hidden files are the files that GitHub puts there for me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and publish this repository just to make sure that it's on GitHub. So when I click publish, this is going to take it from my local machine only and actually publish it online. So when I publish this, I'm going to say, okay, now it's up to you if you want to keep your code private or not. I'm going to keep my code private because I will oftentimes have code in there that I do not want students to see. All right. So now at this point, if I were to go to my online GitHub account and I were to go to my repositories, at this point, I will see the repository that I just made. Now, sometimes they're not really always listed in a particular order. So if you were to do um, a search, it would filter down to the ones you were looking for. And I can see right here, this is the repository that I just made. And you'll notice it's empty. There's no code in there. All I have is this attributes file. Nothing, nothing in there. Okay, so we'll come back to this. What I want to do now is I want to go ahead and open up Eclipse and we're going to create a Java project or, our, or our, our project folder that will be in this repository. So let's go to Eclipse and we're going to create a directory as a workspace. Now a workspace is going to store um, pretty much like all of our stuff, right? So I'm going to browse and I'm going to browse to this particular repository that I just made, which is this one right here. And I'm going to click open. And this is where I want to have be my default workspace. This is where all of my Eclipse work that I make is going to be saved. So I'm going to say launch. All right. So from here, we get this welcome screen. If you don't want this, you can always click this checkbox to make it go away. Um, now at this point, we're going to get to this window. Now in this window, so we have a workspace and our workspace is essentially saying, this is where I'm going to do all my work, right? But now I want to be able to create a Java project. So every folder that we have, um, or think of it rather, every unit that we do in Java, we're going to want to make a new Java project for that unit. And then we'll have files that will go together, maybe for a particular assignment or a particular lesson, and we will put those in a package. So we're going to create a Java project and we're going to call this project unit one. So we're going to call this unit one and we are going to say finish. And we don't need to worry about this module info. So just say don't create. Now the way that these Java projects are set up in Eclipse, if we expand this out, we're going to see that we have this source folder, SRC. This is essentially our default folder for any source code. And our source code is our .java files. Now I'm gonna make a file in here. So I right click and I can just say new class, which is a new Java file. And I'm just going to call this example um, program. And I'll add a main method. And you'll notice there's a lot of cool features. We'll learn all about this in, in class. And I'll say finish. And at this point, I just want my code to do something. So I'm going to do um, a print statement. So I'll say system.out.println. 
And then um, this is an example. I know this is just stunning coding. You just can't believe that you're learning all this, right? So now at this point, my, my program has not been saved, okay? We can tell it's not saved because I have the star up here because my save icon is still colored. If I come over here, I can start to see, holy moly, look at all those files that I have there. So now if I save and run my code, oops, um, I can go ahead and I can run my code. I can see that my, my code is running, everything is good. And then let's say the bell's about to ring and I want to push this online so I can finish working on it at home. Well, so what I can do is I can come over here and I can say, all right, um, right now I have some local changes. So I'm going to click here and say that I want to, that I created a uh, Java project and a unit, we made a unit one folder, correct? Yeah, a unit one folder. And I will do a commit. And then I get this message, which says no local changes. All right, so let's talk about what that means. This right here is telling me that there is nothing on my machine that hasn't been committed. Okay, I can actually see right here that I have a commit that is pending, that I want to push it up to the remote, but I haven't yet. Okay, now if I were to come over here and I were to make some more changes, let's say for example, I made another file and I said, I don't know, we'll call it another program. I know I'm really creative with these names right now. And let's say, wait for it, this file also printed. I know, stop the madness. You just can't contain your excitement here. Um, and I went ahead and did this. I come over here and I see some more changes. Now I can add another commit message. So I can just say made another file, commit to main. Now you'll see I have two commits. So here's the cool thing about this. These commits, um, GitHub will keep them separate. It knows that they are two separate commits, but neither one of them are pushed to the remote yet. So now at this point, when I'm ready to push them to the remote, I can go ahead and say push origin. And now these changes will be pushed online. And so now I can go ahead and I can click on GitHub and I can go and I can refresh my screen. And I will see now that I have three commits that have been made. And I can see the different um, comments for the commits. And if I were to click here, I can see them listed like this. If I had given them descriptions, I would see that information. And if I were to click on one of these individually, I could actually click on browse files and see the actual files. I could click on download and I could download um, a zip file of this, um, of this folder, of this code at this time, which is pretty cool. And so now when I get home, I could then go back into GitHub Desktop and I could say file clone repository and I could clone this repository and have the exact same file set up on my home machine, which is pretty darn cool if you think about it. When we're working in the lab every day at school, we're working on our computer at home, this way we don't have to worry about sending files back and forth, uploading to Google Drive, emailing, etc. We can just push to GitHub and pull when we get home and push when we're done working and pull when we get to class. And we can just keep this back and forth push and pull to always keep our code updated. So you might find that it's easiest for you to um, to have different folders syncing. You could have your whole, um, your all of your class code syncing. It's kind of up to you how you want to do that. But I just wanted you to see how we could create a new repository, put some code in there, push it and so forth. All right, that's all. Thank you.